Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Thank you for coming back to another episode of Scattered Brilliancy. My name is Travis, and I'm here to review episode, season one, episode two of The Quad. The name of this episode was, I don't even remember. And I felt like it was just the perfect opportunity for me to showcase my band skills. The reason I did that is because that's exactly how the band sounds on the show. I'm trying to understand why the band on the show sounds like it came straight out of the software called Finale. It doesn't even sound like a real band. BET. I know y'all can find it in y'all budget to find at least seven horn players who can actually provide y'all with the soundtrack of a real band because that Finale soundtrack is not working because it doesn't sound believable. Neither is it believable that those people are actually playing those instruments. Now, you know, I know that's minor stuff. But the fact that none of them even are looking like they're maybe putting air in the horn, let alone playing it, bothers me as a horn player. Their mouth is just sitting on the mouthpiece. When they drop it, nothing changes. Okay, never mind. That's neither here nor there. So let's get to the review. I'm going to do a uh, sum up of what happened. Side note, I did notice that intro was a whole lot shorter can't say that that's because of me, but I'm glad BET realized that the intro they had last week was entirely too long, and they chopped that thing down. That intro that they have, perfect. And the way that they scroll the names at the bottom of the screen as the show started, perfect. Great job, BET, at getting y'all some extra time for the story that y'all seem to be moving too fast. And I was also told in my comments that the show is actually not even going to be that many episodes. It's maybe somewhere around 10. And that makes a lot of sense with how this show is moving. So let's just start off with what was going on with uh, Dr. Fletcher. So I'm not sure. At first, I thought it was homecoming that was coming up, but apparently it was just some big game that was coming up for the school. So everybody pretty much in this episode is getting ready for that outside of Cedric. So <clears throat> she meets with the DA towards the beginning of the episode. And you know, she meets with the coach first, and she's talking to him about who's going to be the starting quarterback for the game. She wants to be Bo Johnson, who was the white guy that they went down to Texas to get. But... There, he's in between whether it's going to be Bo or whether it's going to be some other guy named Terrence. She'd rather, it be, she'd rather it be Bo just because of everything they had to go through to get Bo there. And it's supposed to be a televised game, so she feels like that'll be a good look for the school. And it could possibly help them get a network deal so that more of their games could be televised. But at that time, he doesn't know. Um, she also meets with the DA um, in terms of Cedric's situation. And this episode, Cedric has gotten out of jail. Which doesn't make sense to me because... I'm not really clear on how many days have passed between last week's episode and this week's episode. So the, the pace of the show is, I'm not really sure exactly how they're doing it. Maybe by the time the whole season is over with, it'll all have made sense timing-wise. But right now, I'm really, really confused because, you know, in the movie, it, it seemed to go at a slow pace. And it was like I said, it was setting up how the whole season was going to go. And last week was the first real episode. So I figured, okay, so this is the pace that they're going to go. I felt like they were going into a lot of detail with stuff. But then the fact that he got out of jail, this episode just... I felt like it was so much stuff in between. Like they went back and just said, you know what? All that footage we shot, we don't need it. It's not really important to the, to the core story. And maybe it's not. Maybe that's why he got out of jail so fast. But... Him going to jail, I really thought was gonna be a, was gonna play a major role, and maybe it still can. I mean, it's only two episodes in, so we'll see. Uh, she also meets with Mr. Biggs. I think that's his name. Is it Mr. Biggs or is it Mr. Briggs? She meets with the guy who gave her the money, and he wants his restaurant to be able to be a vendor for the school since their current vendor's contract is up, as well as he wants her to help two of his exotic dancers get into the school. Um, what else is going on with her? Emma, her? Her daughter was supposed to be doing something with some cleanup crew, and she didn't show up. Uh, she meets with uh, Six Pack. She tries to break up with him. That don't doesn't work. She ends up getting served with divorce papers, and when she finally does see Sydney at the big game, um, Sydney's real disrespectful. I'm surprised she hasn't slapped the taste out of her mouth yet, but hopefully that's coming soon, because that will bring me much joy to see that. And she meets the dancers, and eventually she ends up having sex with six, six Pack by the end of the episode. So that's pretty much all that happened with Dr. Fletcher. On to Bo John, the football player. His dad comes to visit him at GAMU, and his dad from the movie was very leery about him going to GAMU. 
his dad is real country and he talks like this like boy you better get out there and you better throw that football and you better not let any of these colors tell you what you're supposed to be doing this is how his dad talks I'm not sure exactly he's from Texas so I'm guessing it's supposed to be like this he had the nerve to call Gam you colored you I chuckled on the inside just a little bit when he said color you I kind of thought that was funny even though racism isn't funny sometimes it is but most of the time it's not but I thought that was kind of funny and um <laughs> The fact that he kept calling him boy, like, I was just waiting for him to, like, pull out a whip and, like, tell him to go and get the rest of that cotton. But they're white, so, you know, they don't do that. <clears throat> so, uh, game day comes. The coach ends up deciding to start Bo towards the end of the game. But Bo ends up effing up the play, and he fumbles the ball. But Terrence, the other guy I was talking about, he recovers the ball, ends up making the winning touchdown. So, game you wins because it was down to that last touchdown. It was down to the last couple of seconds or minutes or something. But the dad is very upset, and he's like, you don't embarrass me like that. You do this in front of those colored people, and you don't embarrass me. So maybe we'll get more into that. Um, on to Cedric. Cedric uh, finally gets out of jail, like I said, which was way too early in my opinion. But he sees his mom, and he's not really feeling her too much because, like I told y'all last week, she just up and left him in the jail, which we weren't really sure why she left him. And we still didn't get any answers today why she, why she left him. So, BET, I'm starting to feel like I feel like y'all have a great opportunity here with this show. A great opportunity, but I feel like y'all are rushing this story. And I know by now it's, it's too late to even change anything. And the season's probably shot and over with. But <clears throat> I feel like y'all are rushing it way too much. It's, it's, it's being rushed. And maybe if you have to rush it this much, maybe you're following too many characters. That's just my opinion, though. I'm just a teacher in North Carolina. So... He gets out and talks to his mom, and, you know, he's upset at his mom for leaving, and he talks, you know, he doesn't want to be in Atlanta. He just wants to go back to Chicago so he can go to Chantal's funeral, but it's like, mm, sorry, bro, you missed the funeral. Her funeral was yesterday. So he's upset about that, so he takes it upon himself to have his own home-going service for her. So he finds the location where her body was dumped, and he takes some roses that had a zip tie at the end of them, which I didn't understand why the roses had a zip tie at the end of them, and a teddy bear, and he lays it in the spot where her body was found. Um, it was touching. He had a crying scene that lasted all of two seconds. Then he was up and he was gone. Again, real rushed. Not really sure why. Bryce, who is Cedric's roommate, thinks that his dad, who met with uh, Cedric last week, was the reason why Cedric got out. But Bryce's older brother is kind of telling him, you must not really know our dad. Our dad was not going to help that boy. So I'm assuming maybe next week or later on in the season, we'll find out that Bryce is going to have some epiphany about his dad and realizing that his dad is not as a great guy as he, think he is, as he thinks he is. And finally to Noni. Noni is the Afro curly-headed girl who is in the band. Uh, she meets up with Dr. He's a doctor. Dr. Diamond because she, she's been messing up this, this one part of the routine. So the whole episode, this is all we heard. The same little tune. She has been playing that same tune on her saxophone this whole episode. Like, the whole episode. So, she was messing up the routine. And side note, another side note. Those band members are doing a whole lot to still be playing. There's a whole lot in that routine. I mean, even the places like Bethune Cookman, who really go all out in that dance routine, they don't even do as much. They got their horns all the way up in the air. It, uh, okay, never mind. Let me just not even go down that road. So she's messing up. So she goes to meet Dr. Diamond. He's like, you know, you were first, you were fourth chair, now you're first, and you messing up. So he makes her do the routine right there in his office, and she's still effing it up. So he tells her, he gives her this box to stand on, and she's standing on this box, and she's practicing, and she's still effing it up. So he says, take the box with you, go practice it. So, like, throughout the whole episode, every time we see her, she is practicing that same routine with that same song, doing this one spin that she cannot get right. I never knew spinning was that difficult. So he's, you know, trying to give her tough love. So she ends up practicing in the hallway. She practices on the box, and... Earlier in the episode, she practices on the box, and she successfully does the spin. So I'm thinking, okay, she got it. But then when she gets back to practice with everybody else, she Fs, the, she Fs it all the way up and, and has this dramatic fall and then tries to get back in place like nobody saw her fall. So she ends up getting bumped down to fourth chair from first. And during this whole thing, Dr. Diamond does this like, <laughs> like he does something like that. So clearly... Some, that's another story we're about to start following because Dr. Diamond probably got cancer or something like that and we're about to find out that that's why he's so mean and surly but we don't really know and that's all that really happened in that episode 
So for me, as rushed as the episode was, it didn't really feel like a whole lot happened. It felt like it was another episode where they're trying to set it up for something else to happen. Now, outside of the review, I wanted to briefly talk about a little bit of the backlash that I've heard that the show has gotten from HBCUs feeling like the show was not an accurate depiction of an HBCU. Um, I saw that Howard's president or chancellor wrote a letter, maybe it was an open letter or a letter to BET that you know got out about her displeasure in the show and it's rep and how it's representing HBCUs. And I just want to say this. I don't understand why people think that when a show is made, a scripted drama series is made, that there's not going to be some fabrication, there's not going to be some embellishing, and they're not going to touch on some topics that people deem interesting. Now, if this show was made 30 years ago, they could do without all the sex and the drugs and the crime and all that kind of stuff and just make a wholesome show. They want to see sex. They want to see cheating. They want to see drugs. They want to see drama. They want to see drama, and I don't understand why people think that people outside of HBCUs will think that that's what HBCUs, HBCUs are really like. Because, I mean, if we're going to be really honest, schools that are not HBCUs, they deal with far worse things than what this show is touching on. I mean, we don't even have to talk about the rape culture at some of these white schools. We could, but we don't have to. So I think some of the, the more distinguished black people, they need to kind of get off of their high horse and start realizing that it's just a show. It's not real. No one wants to see a no one wants to see a show about some student struggling in his phys physics class. That's the only drama he has is whether he gonna pass physics, if he gonna get his bachelor's. No one cares to watch that. That's what people deal deal with in their real life. People don't want to watch their real life on TV. If they're watching a scripted show, they want to watch a scripted show that's not necessarily real. That kind of looks real, but it's not real. So you know, chill out with the whole oh this is a bad representation of black of, of HBCUs. As I said in my Tyler Perry video, this show is not what's representing black people or black schools bad. It's the actual black people in the black schools. Sorry to tell you that. But thanks for watching this really short uh, review for season one, episode two of The Quad. I know it's like five days late, but oh well, you're still getting it. And you see, I got on my GAM YOU! I got on my GAM YOU colors, not on purpose. Make sure you like, rate, and comment to the channel, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace.